I don't buy new cars, I don't buy brand names, I go to Goodwill for my clothes. I like to save money, I like to find bargains, it's the life I chose. I throw nothing away, I'll find a use another day for all this junk I keep. My neighbors all hate me, they abuse and berate me, cause I like doing it cheap. Yeah, I like doing it cheap. Welcome to another episode of Doing It Cheap. Well, we're going to process this back strap and uh, get this sucker ready to cook. Uh, this video, this is day one, well, this is the day after I picked a deer up off the side of the road. This is the day after the roadkill video. Uh, this meat has been sitting in an ice chest on ice and it's firmed up nicely. Let me zoom in on the meat. That's what you want to look at, not me. Anyway, the uh, the meat has firmed up, and I didn't have a good knife, Idaho hillbilly. So I did go in the house. My daughter has a, a cleaver, and since it don't get much use, it's it's sharp, even though it's not a a high quality brand. And what I do with my deer meat is I go ahead and cut mine up as if I was gonna, as if that was the piece I was gonna put on my plate to eat. Uh, the reason I do it this way is because when I soak this in salt water, because I got so much more area exposed to the salt water, it really gets that gamey taste out, okay? So, I will let this, I will soak this in salt water probably two days. I will, I will take it out, I will dump the water, I will uh, replace it, resalt it. But man, that's some pretty meat right there. That's what you call the tenderloin. But anyway, by going ahead and doing it this way, whenever the time comes to cook it, man, there ain't much, there ain't much to it. You just grab it and flour it and Maybe put a little pepper on it and go on. The uh, I want to tell you something about using cleavers. I was a mess sergeant with the Army National Guard, and we were down in uh, it was either Fort Stewart, Georgia, or Camp Shelby, Mississippi. I forget which. An old boy brought in a rattlesnake he killed and skinned. And all it needed was cutting up and cooking. Well, I grabbed a big old meat cleaver, and like this was a snake, I just started chopping it. Well, these meat cleavers are knives. They're like, they're not axes, and they're and they're made to cut meat, and they do a good job, but they're not meant to be a hatchet. And after I chopped that rattlesnake up, I looked at my cleaver, and I had not, I had big old chunks missing out of it where it hit that big old backbone and I mean it really screwed that cleaver up anyway I'm cutting this anywhere between a quarter inch to three eighths inch thick and I went over to Walmart bought me a new skillet bought me a brand new lodge cast iron skillet made over here in South Pittsburgh Tennessee the only place in the United States that still makes cast iron cookware. Anyway, I bought a brand new skillet for $15.92. And that skillet will last longer than me. Won't ever have to replace it. And it, they come pre-seasoned from the factory. But if you're ever in South Pittsburgh, that's, that's near Chattanooga, Tennessee on Interstate 24. It's between Chattanooga and Mon Eagle Mountain, or Mon Eagle, Tennessee. 
if you're ever uh, if you're ever near Chattanooga, you get a chance to go over there. They uh, they sell direct to the public, and they've got a room where they have seconds, you know, uh, that don't meet their standards. And all it amounts to is there'll be a little spot on it that did not get seasoned. And hell, all you gotta do is take it home and season it and it's perfect. But they'll sell them for like half price. So you can really get you a good bargain if you go there. Anyway, on this meat, we just, uh, I'm gonna cut it all up. I'm gonna put it in this Rubbermaid uh, uh, plastic bowl with salt water. I'm gonna let this sit uh, overnight. I'll check it again tomorrow uh, for you. It'll only be a few seconds. For me, it'll be 24 hours or so. But I'm going to put all of this meat that will go in there that'll fit in that bowl. I'm going to get all of it a can. This right here is not necessarily backstrap. This was like the side meat. Uh, I mean, it's really good. This is like flank steak. This will be real good for the dogs, or us, either one. That's good meat. Anyhow, all I do is I just put this in a bowl, put a little bit in there, a little bit of salt. A little more in there. A little bit of salt. Now the water will turn red. I mean it will turn blood red. And all you're going to do then is you're going to dump that water out and uh, just, you know, just rinse it out. You want to rinse that meat. The idea here is we're trying to get that gamey taste out of it. And that's what the salt does. It, it pulls that blood out. Blood and fat is what gives it that funky taste. So we get rid of the blood and we get rid of the fat. Man, this is just like beef. Tender. Oh, Lord, this is tender. But that'd be uh, coming up in a few minutes for y'all, a couple of days for me. So there you have it. I'm just going to fill that up with water and set it in the refrigerator. And uh, for you, we'll be right back. For me, it'll be the next day. That's it. That goes in the refrigerator. That salt will all that blood right out of there. Check it out tomorrow. Thank you. Now, normally I do this in the house, but because there's things so bloody, and I didn't get the field dressing properly, you know, like it's just a clean shot. There's a lot of blood in this, so I chose not to do it in the house. I'm just out here at the garage. And uh, cause deer blood will even over, you get a few little drops running down your kitchen cabinet or something, hell you smell it. Anyway, what I want to show you here, this is now Friday. Look at that. In just a matter of seconds, we've gone from Thursday, whenever I was first doing this, to now it's Friday. And what I want you to see is, look at how, look how pink that water is, see that? It's just full of blood, it's coming out of that meat. So what we want to do now, is we want to we want to wash we want to wash that bloody water out of there until it runs as clear as we can get it and then I'm going to re-salt it
all I'm going to do here is just rinse this meat real good. And after I get it rinsed real good, I'm just going to salt it again, put it back in the bowl. Okay, this is uh, Saturday. I believe this is, hell, I can't keep up what days is what. But I believe this has been soaking for 48 hours now in salt water. And what I'm gonna do here is I got me some bigger pans. In the ideal situation, I would have these soaking in salt water in a big pan with a lot of liquid. To where that blood could really uh, could really drain out of that meat. But my little refrigerator ain't big enough. So you just you see all that foam, little brine foam. We want this we want this meat to rinse clear. So it's gonna it's gonna take more than more than today. But we're gonna get this, we're gonna get this meat where it is. I mean, sure enough, no blood coming out of it, and it will be so good to eat. So that's all I'm doing now. I'm gonna rinse it, and I'm gonna pack it in the, in the Tupperware container again, put her back in the refrigerator. There's no reason for me to wear you out looking at this. It's the same thing I did yesterday, except I've got these pans here to where I can rinse it a little bit better. I decided before I left that I would go ahead and show you. This water is running pretty darn clear now. And uh, I could cook it tonight. But I'm going to, uh, I'm going to Soak it one more time, but you see how, how clear that is? Water don't have a bunch of blood in it no more. Even me running a hose on it, so. One more night won't hurt it a bit. We could eat it right now. But I'm gonna salt her down one more time. All right. Well, here it is Sunday on Memorial Day weekend. So it's been about three days of soaking this back strap and salt and water and by god I'm ready to eat it so just rinse off my dishes here remember a few minutes ago for you, if memory serves me correct, this water looked really clear with this meat. And now then you see it's drawn out a bunch more blood out of it, foaming up again. So I'm gonna rinse this off a little. You gotta love that cheap pallet workbench, huh? <laughs> These are the ones I just throw together just to use real fast. Of course, they say nothing's as permanent as a temporary fixture. I hope all y'all are, are having or have had a nice, uh, a nice uh, Memorial Day weekend. Mine's been kind of quiet. I didn't get no invites nowhere to go out to eat or be invited to anybody's house. It's just me and the dog and the chicken.
Anyway. You notice we don't see a lot of pink anymore. Because we that blood is drawn that it's sure enough drawn that uh the salt has drawn that blood out. Now I would have preferred I would have preferred to have had a pan this big to soak this much meat. I would have preferred this almost full of water sitting in the refrigerator instead of just this thing here. But as I mentioned before, I'm in a, one of them little old dorm room refrigerators. Not the tiniest one, but the one that's about half again big enough. And uh, so I didn't have room for this big pan right here. Well, I guess if I took some uh, beer out, but hey, we've got to set our priorities. Anyway, give this a one more rinse. And then it's going to be time to cook this stuff. All right. All I'm going to do is just take that piece of meat, I'm going to shake it. I'm going to lay it down there in that flour. Just like that. That's all it gets. I'm going to lay it in a dry pan. I'm not going to fry all this. Just going to fry enough for me and the dogs. You heard it right. Me and the dogs. Ain't nobody else spending Memorial Day weekend with me. So they might as well get treated good. Ah, uh, well, we'll let this sit for a minute. Well, you can tell some time has passed. The shadow moved. <laughs> anyway, what I want to show you is that this has started to, it's like the flour is disappearing. What it's doing is it's soaking up moisture off that meat. And when it does that now, that flour is not going to fall off in the skillet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to double flour it now. All I'm going to do is lay it in there, turn it over, do it like that, put it right back. And then when it starts looking damp, then it's going to be ready to fry. Now what I'm about to do is I'm going to hook up my hot plate out here on an extension cord. So I cook outside, better lighting. Plus, don't want to heat up the house. And, a uh, word about extension cords, you've heard me say it before, just like whenever I was doing that, my kindling process and invention. You want to use a heavy duty cord. Now what I'm using is a 12 gauge cord, and 12 gauge wiring is the same wiring that's running to your receptacle inside your house. So, I'm not using the little dinky wire for safety, you know, for a hazard or anything. See how that done? See how it looks damp? It's because it is damp, okay. I took the whole, that whole pile of meat there that I didn't do this way, I took it all and just dumped it in here and dumped flour over it and rolled it around with my hands. And it made a pretty neat looking batter. And I just set all that in the freezer so I can cook it later. We're going to fry all this up, and me and the dog's going to enjoy it. And y'all are going to sit there with your mouth watering, wishing you was here. Well, y'all invite me over to your house for Memorial Day weekend. By God, I'll bring the deer meat. <laughs> all right, well, we'll let, we'll let that right there soak up a little bit while I get the skillet and everything fired up. I want to talk to you a minute about lodge cast iron skillets or lodge cast iron this is the only manufacturer now in the united states that makes cast iron skillets 
the only one. And it's made down here in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, not far from Chattanooga. Uh, this is the 10 and a quarter inch skillet. And they come pre-seasoned, although not as seasoned as you know, you'd like for them to be, as far as cooking with them every day. Haha, <laughs> made in USA, by God. Anyway, um, if there's a defect, like if this was if this was pitted, then they put it over there on their seconds rack because it ain't good enough to sell out in public like like at Walmart or wherever or hardware store or wherever you buy it. So they're real picky on their on their uh, quality control if you see it in a store. However, if you've got the time and the ability to go by their place over in South Pittsburgh and buy straight from them. You go in a room there where they got seconds and shit. All you gotta do is season that damn thing and you've got a first quality. Anyway, I love my cast iron and I like made in America. I mean, no offense towards anybody like in the UK or wherever like that, but uh, you know, we got to support our own. I guarantee I'll tell you one thing. That thing's better quality than what you get made in China. All right. Well, like I said, all I'm going to do is just use this 12 gauge extension cord. I'm going to turn the skillet on. I'm going to put some lard in it. I'm going to let that bad boy start melting down. I don't want it real hot. Man, you got to love lard. A lot better for you than, mar than a shortening. This is an all natural product. You people that's out there want to be all organic and stuff. Well, by God, you need to be eating lard. But lard is natural. Natural. And I, <laughs> I don't have a fork out here. So I just grabbed me a stick. I just grabbed me a stick to use to maneuver that venison around in the skillet. Anyway, we'll get that, uh, oh, it's already melting down, good. Anyway, when, when I get this to temperature and all that, we'll come back and we'll cook us up some. Well, all right, the grease is hot. Let's cook something. <laughs> Man. Man, I can't wait. Now I have this little hot plate on maximum because we are outside and you know, so when the wind's blowing, it's gonna try to cool it off a little bit. Plus the more stuff you add to your grease, the more you're gonna cool the grease off. Yeah. Mm mm mm. Y'all getting hungry yet? Boy's looking good, looking good. Like old Hank Jr. says, I can skin a buck, I can run a trot line. Well, I don't know if y'all noticed, if it even registered with you, 
All I did, whenever I got that skillet, I pulled, pulled the label off of it, wiped it off, and started using it. Uh, if there was any, if there was any germs, I guarantee you at this temperature right here, they're gone. <laughs> Oh my god, no, oh, it's so good. Damn, hurry up, cool off. Mm. 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 I will tell you this I could have, or I should have, rinsed that some more because it's very salty tasting. Okay? I should have rinsed it and soaked that in just clear water a little longer. Draw some of the salt out because it is very salty. I was expecting it to be salty though. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh, mm. well. I feel much better now. Mm, this is good. Well, it occurred to me the hell, I got everything I need right there to make me some gravy right quick. Hell, I got a water hose. Got some black pepper. And I got a and I've got some flour. Matter of fact, I got this flour where I was, where I was uh, flouring that meat. So what the heck? And I got a stick. So I'll just make up some gravy. If I don't eat it, all the dogs can help. <laughs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. Just cause you're doing it cheap don't mean you gotta do it bad. <laughs> mm. Now I could add more water to that, make it creamy and all that. I ain't doing it. It's just for the dogs and me. Turn the heat off now. I'm just gonna let that sit. I ain't worried about cooking that flour real good. I would if I was gonna serve it to some friends or something. The hell, squirt some little bit of water in there and flour and I ain't even gonna put no pepper in it. I'm just gonna leave it just like that. All right. Well, I just thought that was a quickie. Something good. I'm gonna change my dog's names to soap and water. That way, whenever somebody asks, is this skillet clean? I'll tell them, by God, it's as clean as soap and water and get it. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have a wonderful day and a better tomorrow. Bye.